One of my gorgeous customers has given me the challenge of steampunking her trunk. I'm going to be applying Mint by Michelle's new decoupage paper called Leonardo Lion. He's part of the new steampunk collection. As I'm going to be using paint to blend around the image, I like to tear the edges first and then I decide the placement of the paper. There's going to be a whole lot of texture involved in this piece. So first I'm using a structure paste to apply a ray stencil around where the image is going to be. Underneath where the image is going to be, I'm just putting some random bits of texture from the stencil. I've continued all this stenciling around the sides and the front of the face. And to create just a little bit more texture, I'm stippling on a light colour and this will cover the whole piece. Even though the paper has a dark background, I like to have a light colour under the image because it makes the image really pop. So here's where I'm up to. Stenciling's done all over it and she's all ready for the paper. When I start with the decoupaging, I use something to weigh down the paper so I can just get the attachment done. I'm pasting with some polyurethane top coat. And I do start using the um, felted applicator, but soon realise that it's no good over the texture and it's just better to use my hands and the plastic. The plastic is actually part of the original bag the paper came out of and it gives the paper some protection from all that rubbing and pushing into the texture. You will notice that I do mist the paper with water occasionally. It's just a fine mist. You don't have to oversaturate the paper. And what this does, it relaxes the fibres in the paper and it allows it to stretch slightly. So when you are trying to push it over texture or uneven surfaces, it really helps with this process. And notice that I'm only pasting a couple of inches at a time. The paper will react to your water-based paste, so this means that you only have to deal with pushing out um, wrinkles and bubbles a small amount at a time. Now I'm using a very sharp blade to trim the excess of the lid so I can continue pasting down the front.
and now I'm using the same sharp blade to slice between the lid and the base. Then you need to make sure that all the edges are pasted down and if they're not, just get a little bit more top coat and paste them down. And then just use some sandpaper to remove the excess. I like to use a spray varnish at this stage to seal it before I do any painting. The spray varnishes are not water-based, so they won't reactivate your paper. And you'll have a beautiful finish like this. As we're doing a real steampunk theme here today, I'm attaching now a whole bunch of cogs and wheels that I had previously made in a mold. Some of them are little timber ones that I bought off Amazon and later on we will add some brassy trinkets as well. So the moulds are all on and now we're ready for painting. I'm starting off with Mint by Michelle's Mineral Paint Time and Space Black. It's the perfect base for this project. Now I'm using a small brush to try and go around the lion's mane and if you notice the time and space black is a bit dark for the paper. I'm not worried at this stage. I'm going to continue applying this all over as a base but I will have to come back and blend in another colour. Another good reason for sealing your paper before you paint is that you can wipe off the excess that you don't want on the paper. So this is on the top and I'm just bringing the black up to the edge of the paper and now what I've done is I've mixed some black with some Roaring Twenties which makes a better match for the paper and I'm bringing that right up to the lion's mane now. So with a sponge, I'm adding a little bit more of that green and black mix. And well, I'm using two sponges, one for the green mix, and then I'll come in with some time and space black on another sponge. And I'll just gently move them together.
So I'm just repeating the process on the top. I'm using a small brush to go around the lion's mane and then I'll come in with more on a sponge and blend it into the black. This is only the first layer of paint, but it's looking pretty good already. Some people might like to stop just here, but I feel it needs a little bit more. I really have to apologise because I created this fabulous rust effect, but my phone had a meltdown. But this is what I used. Annie Sloan's Honfleur Brown, Mint by Michelle's Fat Fanta Orange and Retro Wallpaper Yellow. I stippled them on in that order and I sprayed loads of water so there was dribbles everywhere and just kept adding colour to get this effect. So now I'm adding a bit of colour over that dark base. This is a mix of Annie Sloan's Honfleur and Met by Michelle's uh, Fat Fanta Orange and I'm just stippling it on and then loosening it with some water mist and then taking it back off again. And with the same colour I'm dry brushing a bit through his mane just so the image matches that rust that I've created. See how I'm dabbing it off and it's getting trapped in that gorgeous texture. So now I'm coming in with Mint by Michelle's Roaring Twenties. This is a fabulous colour to add to the rust effect. And I'm just stippling it on, spraying it with water, letting it run, dabbing it off, letting it get trapped in all that texture. It was a really hot day this day, so I'm only doing this process in small sections. If you're using a mineral paint, it's good to remember that unlike chalk paint, it won't reactivate with water. So if you put it on and it dries too quickly, you will not be able to reactivate it with the water to, do, to get this effect. So basically that's why I'm doing this in small sections at a time. So here's the fabulous rust effect I've been able to create just with paint and a lot of water spray. And just because I can, I'm colouring in his eyes with a little bit of the Roaring Twenties. So now he's a blue-eyed redhead. The last paint layer I'll apply is some dry brushing of the Time and Space Black. And this just allows that texture to really pop out and adds a bit of grunge.
just a dash of some gold gilding wax here and there and we're nearly done. The final bit of steampunk decoration are these little clocks and cogs that I'm adding to the top of the paper. Here's some close-ups of that fabulous raised stenciling with all that beautiful rust colours over the top. It is just looking fabulous. It's looking better than I even imagined. The funnest part about creating all this rust is that there are no rules. You can be as messy and as drippy as you like. Applying all this texture and adding all these stippled layers really hides the edge of the paper. You cannot see the paper's edge. So what do you think of this steam pump makeover? Well, I'm happy to say that my customer was absolutely delighted. I really hope you've enjoyed this mega steampunk transformation of this timber trunk. If you'd like to see more of my work, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'd love you to like and share this video. Thanks for watching.